Welcome back, of course, you gunners. And in this session, 1.4, we're going to be talking about your toolkit. That's right. All the software, all the tools that you'll be using throughout your journey. And I'm in this, I'm including journey one, journey two, as well as journey three. Now, off the bat, I need to tell you that we are pretty much promoting Adobe software and throughout your whole workshop or for throughout your whole journey, you'll be working with, with their software. But I can also tell you that we'll give you some free alternatives along the way. Now, with Adobe, what you can do is work with their trial versions and you get seven days per software package as a trial version. And I would suggest while you're doing the journey that you use this trial version because that way you can really see whether this is the, the software that you would like to use. You can see whether you're going to have the budget for this and you'll get a really good feel uh, sort of about the, the amazing quality that they give you with all of all of their software. It actually works out really cheaply if you think about the incredible power that that's given to you through the software. All right, so let's kick off. Firstly, in order to register or to get any of the trial versions, you will be going to adobe.com, right? Just point your web browser to adobe.com and it will go to the website. Now, very, very important, you're going to be registering for an Adobe ID. This Adobe ID is free, all right? In the beginning, you do not have to pay for it. Just go ahead and register for it. Right at the right-hand side of the page, you'll notice it says sign in. If you click on it, you'll see it wants to sign into an account. If you don't have one, then just get an Adobe ID. That's step one. Fill in the forms, get your Adobe ID, activate your account. You'll be needing this throughout journey number one, two, and three. Now, I'm going to just step back here for a moment <clears throat> and explain to you how the software works. Now, even though you get your trial version, eventually you might decide that you want to sign up for the full package. And in that case, you'd be diving down here to plan starts from $30 per month. And if you jump in there, it will explain to you exactly how much the whole Creative Cloud costs. Now, throughout this session, you'll see exactly what's in Creative Cloud. But to give you an idea, if you're just going to be interested in Photoshop and Lightroom in order to do some edits and just be creative with photos and maybe build posters and things, then you're pretty much gonna settle for this photography option, which is $10 per month. If you decide you're only going to be working with InDesign, for instance, you will be paying $20 per month. Now, a couple of years ago, it was possible to buy the software outright, but now what they do is you buy a subscription and you pay per month. So on your credit card, you will be doing a debit order per month in order to keep the software. Now, I can tell you that there's about 22 programs in the Creative Cloud. So if you were going for the single app solution and you multiply 20 by 22, you will see you come roughly up to about, I think it's $440. Let's see. So 20 times 22. That's $440. Now, they have this special for all the apps, which is $50. And if you pay $50 per month, you get all 22 plus a, an additional 20 gigabytes of cloud storage. Now, this will all start making sense a little bit later when I show you all the programs. You also have an option for all the apps as well as Adobe Stock. And Adobe Stock is incredible. That you can buy any photos there, you can buy 3D models there, you can buy vector elements there. So it's well worth the investment because normally you pay about $10 per image that you would buy. And in this package, just for $50 extra, you get 10 images per month. So that works out to $3 a month. Now, let's dive back to the front screen and show you what you get with that Adobe ID. So once you've registered for the Adobe ID, I want you guys to go in and sign in with your account. I'm going to use my free account first and just show you what you get. So once you log in, it takes you through to your dashboard. 
Now think of this as your creative dashboard where you can see everything that you're working with. Your files, your applications, your mobile apps, your libraries, your elements, your creative inspiration that you're drawing from your apps, which we'll explain in a later session. Everything here, it's, it's like a whole powerhouse of your creative uh, journey. And on this screen, you get your initial dashboard. And on the dashboard, you can, for instance, install new programs. I will go through that. You can look at the different apps that's available. You can look at third-party add-ons. You can go through the library and so on, so on, so on. I'll get through all of this in a little bit. So your first step is to go to desktop downloads. And these are all the programs that come with your Creative Cloud. Now you'll notice because I'm on a free account, it says buy now, buy now, download trial, download trial, and so on with all of these programs. So if you were to click on download trial, it will download a trial just for that program, in this case Photoshop, and it will be valid for seven days. Now the first one you really need to download is this Creative Cloud. If you don't download Creative Cloud, you can't really install any of the other applications. So you would click on download and it will ask you a couple of questions and it will download the file that you need to install onto your computer. And let me just show you this screen. And here you can just go ahead and answer a couple of questions for Adobe and they will then initiate the download link for you all right so there you start your download continue and you will get that file install that file and then you can go back to adobe.com once that's done now to show you what happens with that application is it's actually a desktop application that installs on your computer so you'll see it opens up like that and think of this as the link between your creative dashboard which is on the website itself and the actual programs on your computer because in this little standalone application you can install further trial versions you can see here you can see all of the different applications that's available to you and you can then install them or you can install a trial version now mine will look a little bit different because on here I'm actually logged into my main account which gives me access to previous versions and full versions of the software. But in your case, you'll see trial version or try, and then you can install the applications. Now I'll talk you through the ones that you'll be using uh, in a little bit, but let's just go back and look at the other elements that's here on your dashboard. So firstly, you've got home, and this tells you everything that's been happening on your account, right? If you install new software, you'll be seeing it there, and maybe if you're following an artist or somebody's appreciating your work on Behance, then you'll see it over there. Secondly, if you go to apps, you've seen this now, this is where you will install your software. And as sort of new updates of the software becomes available, they will be available on this panel. So you can see if there's an update, it will for instance say to me, there's now a new version of Illustrator and I can click on what's new and before I install it, I can see, oh, well, am I going to need this feature? And this is really incredible because you always know that you have the latest software. The third tab is where you can access your online files. Now, I said to you, you get two gigabytes for free in order to store all of your creations online. That's right. So it's in a cloud as well as on your computer and think of it as well like you would think of Dropbox so here you can see I can open that folder and I click if I click on open folder on your computer you'll notice you now have this creative cloud files and any folders that you make inside this is automatically stored to your cloud right so as you work I would suggest you save it in here because then you know your, your files is backed up as well you have two gig to start with. If later on you decide to register, then you have up to 100 gigabytes. And you can store a lot of content on 100 gigabytes. All right. Secondly, on this asset screens, you'll see is your fonts. 
And these fonts are type kit fonts which Adobe makes available for all of your programs. So if you're looking for some inspiration and you're looking for some more fonts to use, then jump over to fonts and you can sync a font from type kit. Now I'll show you all about type kit in a later session. So for now, just know where, where that is. And then you have stock. And Adobe Stock is where you can search for images, vector elements, video clips that you want to use in your work, and so on. The last one, Discover, is where you can create your own profile on Behance. Now, like we said to you, throughout your journey, we want you to start creating your Behance account because that's going to give you an incredible portfolio to showcase at the end of your journey. Remember, we want to showcase your talent because otherwise this whole journey is useless. So under your Discover, you'll find, for instance, that you can add work. You can look at your own work. You can also discover work. And under Discover work, you can find other people's work, other people on behind. And sometimes just find some nice inspiration for maybe a, a sort of a nice design that you would like to do in the future. Or, you know, maybe just, just see what's out there. There is over 10 million creative people on Behance and it's really, really incredible to go and have a look at the amazing work that they do. Okay, so let's go back to the website and have a look here at what's on the dashboard. Now, like I mentioned to you before, under desktop downloads, you will find all of the applications available to you in Creative Cloud. Secondly, under mobile, you'll be able to read up all about the apps that you can use. And I'm going to do a whole section on the apps. It's just absolute magic. And the, the way that the apps actually work with the software, you will be, you'll be astounded. It's mind-blowing. Right, now, further down, you've got your libraries and your files. Now, let me just quickly show you. Let's say, for instance, you were to place files inside this Creative Cloud folder. Those folders are also now available to you online under your files link. So if you go to files, you'll notice here, you've got files, you've got all, you've got shared, you've got your mobile creations, and you've got your libraries. I will talk a lot about Creative Cloud libraries. And think of libraries as commodities or assets that you use throughout all of your programs, including your apps, on your phone, on your tablet devices, on your computer. All of your creations, all of your inspirations, always following you around. In the app session, I'll tell you all about this. And when we set out to create this workshop initially, we called that the mobile design revolution because literally everything around you, every second of every day, every conversation you have, everything you see, everywhere you are, becomes part of your creative process. Doesn't that just give you chills? You'll see later just how that magic works. So if I were to go to files over here and I go to my files screen, you'll see all of the folders on your Creative Cloud account. Now I'm going to log out of this account and just for a moment sign into my main account so that I can show you what this would look like. to the main account now because this is a paid for account you will see that there is a few more options available in my account let me just see what's the problem yeah Now, because I've got a paid for account, you'll see that there is a few more options available which isn't available in the free version, like the Document Cloud apps. But don't worry about it. Pretty much everything else stays the same, and we'll discover all of it as we move along. So let's go back to that screen and look at files. And you'll notice here under files, I now get the same folders as I had on my computer over here. So if I drop in more folders here, I will notice that they, they will be updated over here. Now, the reason I want to show you this is you can pretty much click into any folder 
and you can see the files available in that folder. But what I really like is that you can then share these files. Now, we told you that throughout your journey, you're going to be working with our case study all about Cape Town. And they, they made all these beautiful shots available to us so that we can play around in the programs. But just look at the, the bottom here of these images. If I were to click on this arrow, you can send a link or you can share to Slack. For those of you that know what Slack is, you can move the file, you can copy it, you can rename it, or you can archive it. Now, if we were to send a link, it would ask, ask us, do we want this to be a private file? So only you can view this file or create a public link. And if we create a public link, then we can send that link to anybody. There is the link. So we can send it to a client. Maybe we want to show what we're working on or whatever the case may be. And down here, are some options. So are you going to allow that file to be saved to other people's accounts? Or are you going to allow it to be downloaded? And will you allow comments? Right now, I'm going to just jump out of there. If I were to move back to my main file screen, here's something very interesting as well. What if you were working with a team and they have to have access to the same files? What if you were an art director? Or what if you're coming up with a concept and you want somebody overseas to work with you? Guess what? You can click on this button and collaborate. <laughs> That's right. So if you know somebody else's, else that has the Adobe ID, if you maybe want to connect with one of our members and do a design with them, you can do that. Just ask for the Adobe ID. And if you insert the Adobe ID, their, your files in that folder becomes available to them. And you can either say that they can edit the files or that they can only view those files. All right. So from here, you will manage all of your files. Now, if I were to go to mobile creations, you'll see all of the creations we've made in the apps. And I will spend a lot of time on that in your later session about apps. And then down here under your libraries, you'll see that we can access all the libraries of elements. Some of them were created in apps. Some of them were saved from Adobe stock. Some of them were created in InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, all the programs that you're going to learn. But this is my folder of all of my libraries that is shared amongst all my apps. Okay. So now that you understand what is inside those files, let's jump back to the dashboard. The mobile design the screen, I will discuss later in the app session. And then further down, you again have access to your libraries and your document or your Creative Cloud files, and then also your photos that you took with the Lightroom app. Over here is your fonts, your Typekit fonts, and over here, any colors that you might have uh, accessed from one of the apps or maybe a, a color library that you saved in one of the programs. Over here, you can access your Adobe stock again if you want some images to work with, over on community, you have your creative network, and that's your link to Behance. And if we were to click here, it would go to the Behance website. Now, remember, your account has a free subscription for you on Behance. And like we told you earlier, we would like you to start uploading your work into your Behance account. Every time you do something nice, whether it's in a session with us, whether it's one of the exercises that we give you, go and upload it on your Behance account and also send it to us so that we can feature your work. Okay, I'm going to jump back. Now, at the bottom of this dashboard on the right, you will find a portfolio website link. Now, I will speak about that during your first journey. And this is a free portfolio site that links to your Behance account that you can then send for prospective jobs so that people can see the, 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 the sort of work you've done and what talent you have. Um, over here, at the bottom, you've got learn and support. And this is a fantastic link for you to go and learn some of the other programs. Maybe you'll see a program like Dimension or Character Studio as we go through our examples, and you might know more about them. 
Now, under support, you can go and literally read up on any program. Maybe you're doing our Dreamweaver session, or maybe our InDesign session, you decide you want to know more. Just go in here and do the support. You've got a beginner's guide, you have a user guide, and you have tutorials. And you can really, really dive into this world of learning and really get to know your programs. Now, without further ado, I'm going to jump back to my dashboard and show you the programs that you'll be using in journey number one. Now, journey one is based largely on design for, for digital as well as for print. So we'll pretty much be focusing on InDesign, Photoshop and Illustrator. And th that is what we call the big three when it comes to Adobe software. All of them are magical and each of them have their own strengths. In Journey 1, we look at Photoshop as well as Illustrator, while in Journey 2, we dive into InDesign. And InDesign is a powerhouse of, uh, you can almost think of it as your foundation, where all of your creations come into a final product, like a print brochure or like a digital PDF or like a business card. And whatever we create in the other programs, we always want to take to InDesign because InDesign is incredibly flexible in creating your final collateral. Okay, if I refer to collateral, it's literally your final products when it's ready for print or for digital. Now, let's dive into desktop downloads over here and have a look at these three programs. Firstly, let's have a look at Photoshop. I'm going to play you the videos that Adobe has for each of these software packages to give you an idea of the software you'll be using. That is Photoshop and I'm sure you've heard of Photoshop many times in your life it is actually such a popular program that it's become a, its own verb and you would say that you know somebody has been photoshopped so install that one you can download it over here you can install it get that one ready later on in journey one we will be having a very intensive look at Photoshop and how to use it now, the next one is Illustrator, and this is for creating logos or flat artwork. Or if you're really good at drawing, you're going to love Illustrator.
So Illustrator, we're going to be using to create our logo, to create our first business card. This is coming up in two sessions from now. So go ahead and install Illustrator as well. Now, just to recap, remember, you can either download the trial version from in here, or you can go to that Creative Cloud panel and go to Apps and install them from over there. All right, so get Photoshop and Illustrator ready. You'll be using them. When we get to the session where we're diving into the software, we're going to expect you to already have it on your computer and have it open. If you have any problems, email us. Let us know so that we can get in touch with you and tell you how to install it or maybe just send an installation guide or something like that. Now, just to get you very excited, let me show you InDesign, which you will meet in your second journey. And I'm going to show you the video over here. Now let's have a look at what InDesign is all about. Right, so InDesign, like I said, is your foundation for all of your creations. Are you excited yet? Okay, we can't wait to show you all these applications. Now, if I jump back, just for a moment, I'm going to show you what you will be using inside Journey 3, if you do want to install them so long. And these are your uh, web design programs. And we'll be having a look at Dreamweaver as well as Muse. Dreamweaver is a WYSIWYG editor to create websites and also to be able to see the code behind websites, while Muse is a way of creating websites without having to code. And yes, we'll give you both abilities because we want you to understand what it means to have a website purely from a design perspective, but also from a coding perspective we want you to understand what's the building blocks of websites so let's look at what dreamweaver is all about first Let's have a look at Muse.
Brilliant. All right, so you'll notice there is a lot of other packages here as well. If you want to go and explore, go ahead. All right, there is a lot of really incredible creativity waiting for you here. And all of this is available to you. As we go through all of our sessions and through your journey, I will introduce you to all of them later on in journey one and we will introduce you to spark and spark is absolute magic especially if you want incredible results very quickly now just to recap as i said download your trial version or go to this panel and download the applications and you'll see when you want to open them whether you're in windows or mac just type in the application and the applications that you've got installed will pop up so for, for instance for photoshop if you open up photoshop then the program will open on your computer our sessions on photoshop and illustrator will start where you have the programs open already all right so bear that in mind have have them ready have them installed before we commence those sessions there's photoshop start and if you have illustrator then it will pop up on your your programs panel otherwise as well if once you have it installed you can actually launch the applications from inside this panel so remember that you know you you can actually just open them straight from here if you do want to work with them what i need to mention to you as well is if you decide to buy this software somewhere along this journey then over on the right hand side where your account is you can click manage account and you can go and buy that subscription all right they will have the price there they will tell you all about your account your account details and you can click on buy software or buy subscription and you will then have access to all this magic all the time the nice thing about the, this software as well is as the new updates become available your uh, account will sort of access those updates and ask you whether you would like to update all right so just go to your manage screen and just look for your subscription. You'll see here plans and products and you will be able to buy your subscription. Also, if you ever want to cancel your subscription, you can do it from this panel. Now, lastly, what I did mention to you was Adobe Stock. Let's have a look at that quickly. The address is stock.adobe.com. We will reference Adobe Stock quite a lot throughout your journey, but for now, go and explore. There is incredible, incredible visuals here, and to take our case study as an example, if we were to type in here Cape Town, and we click enter, you'll see they have some incredible photos available to you. So go and insert your hometown or uh, maybe a hobby that you have and go and look what's available. Now, what I like a lot about your Adobe Stock Library is, let's say you find a nice shot, and this is Burkhop, which is a nice uh, colored area inside of Cape Town where you've got all these colored little houses. Now, if you found a photo you like and you want to find something similar, you can click here on Find Similar. And it returns more photos with the same sort of colors or color schemes. Maybe you're looking for photos that's more sort of sun, like a sunset or that has coloring like this and you can find similar. And you can really drill it down to anything that you want. And you can keep going to find similar again and again and again. It will return some amazing results. Now, once you find a photo, what I have done here is you can either buy the image directly so you can license and save to a folder or you can save a preview and this is magical because imagine now all of the apps we're going to show you all of the programs we're going to show you whether cell phone tablet or on the computer itself you can save this preview straight to your creative cloud folders and if i look in here i've got your creative cloud uh, folder over there and I can save a preview of that image into that folder and that means we can now use that folder or use that image inside our applications to see what our designs would be like before we actually buy that image so remember the two options that one you will actually be buying the image while this one you can save a preview so that you can use them in all of your apps 
I will mention this again when we do our app session in 1.13. So we will come back to this. Also, you'll notice at the top of stock, you have your videos link. You can find videos on any topic. There's some Cape Town videos. You can find templates. So if you want a template, let's say, for instance, you want a brochure or you want an InDesign book or you want to just an inspiration for a brand, for instance, then you can even buy stationery or, you know, Photoshop files or Illustrator files that's ready for you to work with. And I would highly recommend this. And in our sessions, you'll also see that we recommend in the beginning to work with templates just so that you can start getting a feel for design what works how alignment works and you know if you find a, a look that you like you kind of try and make it your own and it's a fantastic way to start sort of training your eye on what makes good design okay also here at the top you have the new option which is 3d and that's for 3d materials for the dimension program Okay, if, you want, if you're interested in 3D, then Adobe has a software package called the Dimension. Okay, so that's your Adobe wrap-up. Uh, I am going to mention these two for you because in Journey 1, we'll be looking at two free alternatives. So if you have no budget, but you still want to learn, you still want to create with us, then don't worry. First one is Inkscape, and there's the URL, inkscape.org forward slash en for the English version. And it's available for Mac as well as PC. It's a free vector program, just like Illustrator would be. All right, so we will do a deep dive in Journey 1 to show you what you can do in this software. If you want to use uh, th this, this one, just download it and install that as long, so long as well, so that when we get to that session, you're ready with your software. Then also the alternative to Photoshop is called GIMP. Now, GIMP is available at www.gimp.org and you can download the application again for Mac or for PC. Install it because later on we will have a deep dive into GIMP. Right, so get ready guys. We are about to take you on an incredible journey into the most creative software as we show you what hidden creative ability. See you soon.